Ladies and gentlemen, this is your host, Captain Rex Wittkamp. I'm back with you again with another episode of the Ready, Set, Live podcast. This is a podcast focusing on bringing out the best potential in all of my listeners and all of my viewers. It's a purpose-driven potential. I have some amazing guests on my show, and I learned so much from them, and I'm honored again today to be with a very special guest. Today, we have Beata Sewerin Reed. And I hope I didn't <laughs> mispronounce that name too badly. But Beata is a life coach with an amazing story. She comes from Poland and she has once visited the United States on a tourism and hospitality track, which then turned into discovering some really amazing gifts that she has that she pours into her clients now as a voice of experience and comfort as a life coach. And Beata, hi, well, welcome. Hi, Rex. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm so excited. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I know everybody is just incredibly busy nowadays. And uh, what I like to say that my guests are taking action, be doing the things that count and not just counting the things that they're doing. So even though everyone's busy, you, my friend, are doing the things that count. And so for that, I, I applaud you. I'm always available for important projects for people that I admire and for what they do. So you are one of them. Well, thank you. I, I'm honored to be in your circle. And uh, I, I can only imagine the greatness that will come of this. So <laughs> I want to take a quick minute to uh, offer you the floor to introduce to yourselves, our, to, our list, to my listeners and my viewers, you know, a little bit about yourself and your background, what it is you're doing now and some of your efforts, maybe some trials and tribulations. And, and of course, where to find you on social media. Absolutely. Thank you. You already said a lot. So, and you released the secret where my accent, co accent comes from. So I'm from Poland, like you just said, and I came, so I will take you a little bit on a journey with me, uh, everyone who is listening. And you, I, let me go back. My name is Beata Severin Reed. He did great. You need, I need to admire you for how you try to pronounce my name. Anyway, I'm from Poland. I came in 2011. So it's almost what, almost is nine years now. Yeah. And, um, but I didn't come as a tourist and I didn't come to, you know, just to have fun. I came to heal. So my story started back in Poland. I was crushing my dreams, uh, living, what I could and thought I'm living a big dream and rising myself up, but I had a lot of limiting beliefs uh, imposed on me because of my culture. One of them was, it's great that you are studying. It's great that you are dreaming about this great uh, career and you are kind of doing it now, but the number one responsibility for women is to have family and to have settled life with your partner. As, and I, at that time, was engaged uh, to the man, very beautiful man. We were together for 11 years. And at some point, our dreams were not really on, we were not on the same page. We were dreaming totally different dreams. I was dreaming big. He was dreaming as big as he could where we were living. And to make the whole story short, one day my beautiful man decided to walk away with different beautiful women and uh, I was crushed. And that was the reason I, I went into a couple really tough years of depression. And, but I had this thought like the, there is more in life. You know that there is more in life. You are not quitter. You do something with it. And it was the, Time when I decided to come to the United States, to the country where dreams are, co are coming true. Just, you know, when you just ask, everything is coming, the money uh, grows on trees, you know, all this stuff, all this story. It's like, okay, I'm just going to go there. So in 2011, I came with one luggage and one big dream to start new life. As soon as I landed, <laughs> I figured out that, well, English is good, but it's not that good. I, you know, they're like, hey man, what up bro? I was like, what? 
where am I? I landed in Colorado Springs. It's kind of, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if you watched uh, Dr. Queen. There was a movie. So it was really my memory, the, just the desert kind of like, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? But I, I went to the place that I had contract with a five-star resort. And uh, I was, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. My life is going to be awesome. Again, soon, not, not too long after I found out that my life is not that awesome, that I'm working in this five-star resort, living two stars life, because it was not about what was surrounding me, the beautiful opportunities, but what, how I was living on the inside. And on the inside, I didn't take responsibility for my life and I did not resolve issues that I had back in at the time home back in Poland. So that took me on another journey to find out who I'm really, uh, who I really am and what, why I am here on this planet and found a coach. I love, I fall in love with coaching and it's how I decided that it's what I was actually always dreaming about to help people to discover their potential who they are and that actually our potential is unlimited but the thoughts the stories that we impose on ourselves by ourselves or the people who we live with the society it's what's stopping us so this is a short story and uh, I, I one day still working at this beautiful place I decided okay today is the day you're gonna follow your dream follow your mission, follow your meaningful life, or you're going to stay here and be unhappy. So I choose my dream. And today I'm happy and I help people. To, actually, I empower people through change and transition because I change and transition my entire life. And the main point of my teaching is independent thinking. Think for yourself first is my motto. It's what I was taught and discovered later on that all my travels were coming from one major place, from my head okay. and the stories that I was telling myself. So it's what I do today. I help people to re rewire and rewrite their life stories so they can live fully. That's an amazing uh, background and, and short version of your story and just the <laughs> drive it uh it rings true because it, to me i look at you and i see that you are leading an easy life okay i know life isn't easy but because you are living your purpose you can probably admit that your life is easy right and i tell my guests and i tell my clients i tell people that i pour into and i say listen if you're doing something that you're not designed to do life is really hard but when we live our purpose life becomes really easy. And I can tell that you have such an amazing glow because you are fulfilling your purpose. And it is one of the reasons I attracted you to come on the, the show today to talk about these topics. And, you know, I want to just introduce our topics. We're, we're still talking about the five tenets. And I don't know how long I've been uh, talking about this, but I feel <laughs> that, you know, because we all share this experience of life right now, where we're at, with the coronavirus and the uncertainty and the anxiety that everyone feels, we're all feeling this together. And um, it feels almost impersonal when people say, well, we're all in it together, you know, but you have no idea the pain that other people feel and they have no idea the pain that some, you know, you may, some of us may feel on the inside. But I know that by going through an active process and applying these five tenets, it can be life changing for some, a lot of people. And so, we're talking about rising above mediocrity because mediocrity is everywhere in life. It's everywhere. No matter what you do in life uh, or what your responsibility is, you can find mediocrity at every level of every one of your uh, hats that you wear during the day. We're talking about raising up uh, our standards, elevating our standards. And if we want to make a change, that that is absolutely necessary. The first two blocks there, we get those out of the way. We start visualizing the best versions of ourselves and why that's important and how the visualization process is very, very 
uh, strong and it can be very uh, well served in somebody's best interest if they begin to learn how to visualize that. Uh, also living up to their potential, their highest potential. Once they can see that vision in their mind, they start to live up to that potential. And that is an active process that they start to achieve once they make the decision to choose uh, to live towards that visualization of themselves. And then the very final thought is, is giving purpose for that potential. So to be laser focused in that potential to, to fulfill one's purpose. And this is all in your realm of expertise. <laughs> Why don't we just take it from really, uh, rising above mediocrity? How, why is that important? Ah, what a great question. This is so important to me, at least, and to people that I work with, because when, like you already said, when you live the life that you don't admire, you feel unhappy. And you know, Rex, I noticed that me many people and most of us we don't really choose medi mediocrity, but many of us settle for it. Absolutely. Why? Why? Because we have all the stories in our head that were told, taught us, or we created because of our ex experiences that are, are keeping us small. And when we live small, we are so disappointed that the inside, you know, this is the pain that I, wa I want to talk about is invisible sometimes no one can see it but you can feel it it's like you would stop breathing and you you know that you want to breathe but you just can't so you need the air this is how the mediocrity tastes and we don't like it but you know i think it's also about how we think about life and i don't know if i can bring the story here uh, did you hear a story about two guys that they were put for, it was competition, to cut the tree in 10 minutes? Did you hear that story? I have not heard that story, no. Let's okay. Yeah, I, I want to tell you that story. So there, there was a, a research and they put two guys to cut one tree each in two separate places in 10 minutes with an axe, the bland axe. So the first guy, as soon as they, they uh, dropped him there and the timer went off, he started cutting the tree so hard. He was giving all, he, all his power. He was big man. And he was just, I'm going to crush it. I'm going to crush it. And he got exhausted in probably three minutes. He got so exhausted. He's like, okay. Uh, I'm giving up. It's not possible. The, set, the other guy, he, when they dropped him and the timer went off, he gave a thought to, this, to his job and his accomplishment. And he decided to actually make the X work and he polished it. So as soon as he started, it took him another two minutes maybe, but as soon as he got uh, start cutting the tree, it took him maybe another four minutes. Well, he ended before the time uh, came. And so what is the difference between these two <clears throat> guys? It's and it, the difference between living life aware and living life uh, in a mediocrity, the way of thinking, because one of them put all his power without taking a moment to think, what is my goal here? It's just working hard. He was taught that working hard is the way to live. The other one was taught that working hard is good, but working smart is better. So whatever you do in your life, give it a thought first. Think how, what is your goal? And what tools do you need? Because it's not about working hard, but how working hard is going to give you better results. Exactly. And this is, that's a good, uh, that's a great story. And it reminds me of um, some people that I've uh, uh, come to know and uh, to like and to trust. And it's, it's the theory that iron sharpens iron. And when you are the smartest one in your group, 
what does our mentor Les Brown say? You need to get it <laughs> right. And so the way to navigate through these challenging times is to have someone that you can lean on to sharpen your own ax so that you yep. can have life a lot easier. And it becomes easier once you, um, once you live out of a perspective that mediocrity is not okay and you must live from above mediocrity. So I'm sure that what you said is going to resonate with a lot of uh, my listeners and viewers. So thank you for that. Absolutely. I, you know, I was the one, the, the first guy for a long time. I was using all my power pushing, but d- didn't really know where I'm going with it and what, what is the reason what, that I'm making all this effort. So it's important to... Yeah, somebody, I'm sorry, want, I can. somebody once said that a, a life of mediocrity is a waste of life. And, and Will Smith, the actor Will Smith said, being realistic is the most common path to mediocrity. A lot of, a lot of uh, our associations will tell us when we pursue our dreams, man, get real, you can't do that, be realistic. They bring, you, they bring you right back down to earth because they know they can't achieve that next level or don't want to, or can't even visualize and see the next level. So they don't want anybody going above them, right? And so these Absolutely. are avoid and find somebody that looks down and says, you can make it. Let me show you how to sharpen the ax and then get it up to this level. Because if you're realistic, you're, going, you're on your way to mediocrity. So thank you for that. I always say, do not let people without a vision tell you what is possible for you. It's possible that they are wrong. Yes. So exactly. go, after, go after what you love and what is possible for you. Yeah. You sure. raise the bar and set your bar on your level. You have to know where to look for the right information. And if you... Absolutely. Information, and like you said... You no. Know. <laughs> and like you said, following the right people, people who are already there that can take you to the next level. Just one small story also. For a long time, I deal with my accent. I hated to hear myself. or So I would never leave you a voicemail. I would text you, but I would never leave a voicemail because I was ashamed of that. And then I met people and they're like, oh my gosh, your accent is actually your, something what differs you from somebody else. So it's your gift. I said, okay, I'm gonna own it. So own your life, own your story and follow people that are already there. That's awesome. And that's going to, that's gonna help somebody that's listening right now. If you think you have a flaw, own that flaw because it is that specific flaw that you think is a flaw that everyone else may think is your golden ticket, your golden key, your success point in life. So let's talk about that next level that you mentioned, Beata, elevating your standards. It's a very easy thing for people to take the easy way out and, and not become better because the process is what's difficult. So how can people elevate their standards and, and why is that important? That is so important. If you want to live different life, you have to start thinking and doing different things. Because if you look at your neighbor and you think, oh my gosh, they they have okay life. It means that you need to do something different. Or if you look at your life and you have this inner desire, gosh, is it is that all for me? If you feel this emptiness, it means that you are not reaching high enough, that there is more and you should go for it right now because tomorrow is not promised. So start today. There is also no one day on the calendar. So your one day and your tomorrow starts today. And, you know, uh, Tony Robbins said that if you want to, if, I think he was talking about himself. He said, when I decided to change my life, to change what I don't like, the results that I don't like, I knew that I had to raise my standards. So I paused for a second, took a notebook, and I wrote down what I'm tolerating, what I'm accepting, and who I want to become for myself and for the others. Because people, like you just said before, they're going to impose on you their own standards. And you can follow them, you can be follower, or you can be leader. 
And as a leader, you choose your own path. You create, you don't follow. You follow the, the people that are already there, the mentors that we mentioned, but not someone who is not in the arena. Uh, Brenna Brown, yes, yeah, she said, if someone is on, in, not in the arena, is not fighting the same game, I'm not interested in their opinions because their opinions are none of my business. They cannot take me to the next level of my life. That's right. And I, th and I think that, that, that that's important. It's what happened to me. I was living very small life until I discovered that there is more and who, whose decision is to follow it? Mine. I had to start thinking differently and doing different, taking different action. That's amazing. I, <laughs> it's like Tony Robbins said, if you want to make a change, what he did and what I think a lot of us that get to the next level, what we do is we immediately uh, get past the first step, which is being unsettled and is being uh, not, uh, you're, you're not being satisfied with what the mediocrity is. And so then you have to say, okay, now that I'm aware that there, this exists, there has to be another level. And then consciously, that's when people make the change to rise. If you want to make a change, you have to elevate your standards. And, you know, and people, they, some people feel, feel guilty if, if they feel, well, if I elevate my standards, I'm not going to have any more friends. Wrong. <laughs> right. You're going to have better friends. <laughs> friends. And the, the ones that matter that are going to push you into your destiny. And, and I always tell my clients, don't ever lower your standards to fit other people's expectations of you. Because like you said, it's none of your business what their opinions are. I love what you just said. I think um, Don Cardon, probably it was him who said, everyone is the captain of their own ship. So the, your life is your ship. You are the captain. And you can invite to your ship whoever you want, but if they don't want to join you, you leave them on the shore. You don't wait for people. You need to be the captain and you need to be the leader who takes you to the next level. So it always, I say, I'm inviting you to, to come and join me on my journey, on my level. And if you are not ready, I'm sorry wait for the next bus <laughs> this is kind of a trick question but i think my my listeners may know who this is but i'm just going to ask to see if okay do you know who ray Kroc is oh my gosh no ray, who is ray Kroc? Kroc is the founder and inventor of mcdonald's corporation oh okay the golden i Heart should know that uh, he said that the quality of a leader is reflected in the standards that they set for themselves. And so when you talk about being a leader and a captain of your own ship, you know, to be a leader, you have to demand a higher set of standards for yourself before you can demand. Change starts from within. You have to demand that of yourself before moving on to what you can expect of other people as a leader. So that was very powerful what you said. Absolutely, Rex, because I'm seeing so many unhappy people living this unhappy lives with partners that they don't feel they connect anymore with in jobs that they hate. And but their standard is to live just to live day from day and not reaching to the higher level. Yeah. It, it's a trap. So, that some people live their entire life and unfulfilled. Uh, when you absolutely and you have one focus in your life to fulfill your potential, life becomes easy and you start attracting success and because you're doing what it is that comes naturally. So let's talk about getting to, uh, getting to where, what's the action that needs to take place before you can take the next step? After you wanna elevate your standards, let's talk about visualizing. Okay, the visualization process is not something you can go buy on a shelf. This is not something that you can order off Amazon. This is not something that people can give you. This is, some, this is an active activity that people must do within their own minds. They must visualize the best versions of themselves. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Absolutely. And I'm going to talk from my point of view and it worked, worked for me and it what works for my clients. Uh, so when you are at the stage when you want to visualize your best version of yourself and your life, 
I cannot imagine that without clarity. I cannot imagine to visualize what is gonna, who I'm gonna be or what I'm gonna have in my life uh, six months from now, a year from now, without being clear when I'm going. Because I'm sure you're, you heard the quote, it, if you don't know where I, you are going, it doesn't matter what path you're gonna take, yes? It's from the Alice in Wonderland. So, and the ins what is the other insanity in life? Doing the same stuff over and over and expecting different results. So you have to get clear because clarity brings awareness. You have to know what, how did I end it? My first quest question is how did, how did I get here? What was my part? What, what did I bring to the table? End it here where I am and where am I going? Two, two, two important questions. How did I get here? Where am I going? Who do I need or what tools do I need to learn, to gain, to get where I want to be? So the, I, I would really encourage everyone to get clear on your goal or on, on your dream. What is it about? Is it about your business? Is it your personal life, your career? Crystallize that. Even Les Brown, he was, he was stressing us during the, uh, one of our calls. Like, you need to know how, what brought you to, what, what is your destination. It doesn't matter how you're gonna, the, the how is not important, but you need to know why you are here and where are you going. That's, a, that's perfect um, viewpoint and perspective on, on four crucial questions that, um, and I know Les Brown has talked about this before, but he's like, he mentions being on the train in Europe, the Eurorail, right? This yeah. And, and they, the conductor comes around and asks you three questions. Who are you? Where are you going? And where have you been? And if we don't know the answers to those questions, we're struggling with identity. Who am I? We're struggling with origin. Where, where did I come from? And then we're struggling with uh, destiny, which is where am I going? And then I would also add one more thing, and that's purpose. Why are we here? So identity, origin, uh, purpose, and destiny. I, I got it in my book of notes right here. There. <laughs> awesome. And you know, if I, I, I love that you said identity because I feel like I lost my identity for a while. And uh, not only because I was changing the culture so also because of my previous experience and i think when we don't know who we are why we are here and where we are going it happens because we view ourselves through other people's eyes expectations and stories about you and it was it was me i thought that i'm not enough because my i have an accent i'm not enough because i'm an immigrant at that time so we're judging ourselves. It's very important to get clear on who you are, why are you here, and where are you going, and feel it, feel it, and, and own it. I think many of us, we don't own our standards, we don't, our, don't own our visions, and without a vision, you'll be just standing uh, there by the stop and think, okay, what is next? Oh, whatever. And I relate that to being, you know, like a jellyfish in the ocean that's just subject to the currents and the wind and no destination, no reason, no nothing. And, you know, I, here's a powerful uh, quote from Abraham Hicks. And he says that you're more productive doing 15 minutes of visualization than from 16 hours of hard labor. And so when before you talked about, you know, sharpening the ax and the guy with the, you know, smarter versus working harder, you know, if you visualize you're sharpening the axe and you're taking a sharper, you're shortcutting your destination when you visualize your endpoint. But if you want to take your axe and just start whacking at the tree of life, you're doing the 16 hours of hard labor that isn't serving you well. And you'll be there for a long time and you'll be stuck like most people. So one thing I want to mention too, did you have something else? I, I just want to add, I do five minutes, but very short visualization in them every morning. And I love what this guy asked at the end because he said, in your mind, eyes, feel it, see it, taste it, where you are, how, what is the experience? And when you see your experience, ask yourself, what 
were the limiting beliefs that you needed to give up to accomplish that goal? What were the actions that you needed to take to accomplish that goal? I think this is so beautiful because to going after what you want, it's not that you are just working on it, but there is also something what you have to give up on. And usually it's uh, the limiting stories and without action, nothing is possible. So you have to take actions towards your dream and goal. It's an active process. I agree. And you know, that's that what you said about seeing it and feeling it and believing it. What that re- yeah. is coming up with a mental blueprint and the blueprints are the foundation of any structure, a structure, anything in, in exists such as a building or a house. It starts with a, an idea in the head, a visualization, if you will, it becomes a blueprint. And then it becomes an actual thing. So if you want to see it in the end, you have to believe it first and you have to visualize. Right. And so once you visualize, you realize. And once you realize, it will then materialize. So I want to go really quick on um, an introduction to a book I just read. This is called yes. The Mastery of Love. Have you read this? Not that one. But it's a, 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 a four agreements. I read the four agreements. This is, yeah, okay. So by uh, Don Miguel Ruiz. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's a Toltec. The Toltec are um, a um, subset of Mexican descent that are that believe in um, the power of lasting change in people's lives according to their purpose. And the way that he breaks this down, he talks about those limiting beliefs that were created and instilled upon people from a very early age. So those limiting beliefs, they're not our fault. You know, I, I tell people, be okay with being wrong about how you think because every, it happens to everybody. Your parents did the best that they could and their parents did the best that they could. And if you have a child or you're raising a kid, you're doing the best that you can to give the values of, of, of meaning of life. Um, but when you get older, you have, things have changed and you're, you're your own uh, entity, you're your own uh, human being, and you have the ability to think yourself in a different direction. And because of those limiting beliefs, you can change your belief system. And all success is only attained by the measure of somebody's belief. And, uh, and that's, that's powerful. I thank you for reminding me of that. Absolutely. You know, I'm the walking example of living for a long time in a limiting story. But today I'm here talking to Rex on his great podcast. Come on, everything is possible. <laughs> right. Rex can have a podcast, obviously. <laughs> right. <laughs> I tell- Whatever you set your mind up to, yeah? And you follow it. And they said, you have a podcast? <laughs> like a big question mark at the end, you know? Like, I'm like, yeah, if I can do it, you can do it. Anybody can do this. I just- Absolutely. I'm just a common man doing uncommon things with my life because I, I found purpose in helping others to succeed, finding their potential. And so that's why I think that we met and, and talk a little bit about our next point, which is, which is living up to your highest potential, because you said, here I am and you're living proof. So you are living up to your highest potential. How does that make you feel? Ah, what a wonderful question. I think I have to bring us back to this briefing, you know, when sometimes when you run and maybe you didn't run for a while, you feel like it's heavy. Oh my gosh, I cannot breathe. So that was the picture of me before. I thought I was leaving, but I was not alive. And today I'm waking up in the morning and in when we were talking uh, before the podcast started, I said, I will, I'm a little bit tired. I, lo- I do a lot of stuff. But tired is not an issue anymore. I, tired is not excuse. Tired is just telling me that you need to follow what you are doing. So there is no excuses. I'm here. I love it. I, I love my life. I love to help people. And I think the meaning of life and the purpose of life and living for my own potential is helping others to get where I am or even further. because. It's not the end for me. I'm, I'm coming after you people where Les Brown and everyone else, I'm, I'm be there. So for all of my listeners and viewers, wouldn't you want the opportunity to meet Viata and <laughs> <laughs> well, 
way that she can bring you, I know you bring a smile to my face every time we talk, but you know, like I said, when I said, how does it make you feel? You, you brought in a huge sigh of relief. And um, I have another quote for you. I'm a man of quotes. So yes. Oprah, well, Oprah Winfrey said that there is no paycheck that can equal the feeling of contentment that comes from being the person you were meant to be. And, and that, that says everything about how you were so just relieved when I asked you that question. How does it make you feel? <laughs> and, you know, and all of that, what we were talking until that point goes back to taking responsibility for your own life. Your parents did what they could. You are doing for your kids what you can with what you have at this moment. But your kids, they, and we all have to take responsibility. And it's going to take us to this moment when you realize what is possible for you. And it's going to be just wonderful. The feeling is just, I, it's hard to explain in words. This is the pleasure that I feel serving others and like being here with you. It's just it's the sense of my life. And I cannot imagine different life. <laughs> You're, you're living uh, a definition of a John Maxwell quote, you're, which says that success is knowing your purpose in life and growing to reach your maximum potential and then sowing the seeds that benefit others. I, that describes you. Perfect. Thank you so much. But I just want to remind everyone, it's, it's not that I just visualize that and do nothing and meditate and wait till someone is going to bring me the seed or platter. No. I work for it. I, I go and I, I think that the best way to describe myself is I, I show up. I show up for myself. Even I'm scared, even I have a fear, maybe my accent is still a, an issue, but my dream is bigger and I'm going to show up and you're going to hear me and you're going to maybe get even tired of me, but I was like, hello, I'm here. Don't forget me. <laughs> Well, that's amazing. You know, part of the end uh, conclusion of our talk today, and, and thank you again for your time. Um, it's, it's one of the things that we can't control in life, and that's time, and the other thing is change. And so I, I thank you for so much for being on. I wanted to get that out. Um, be sure to give me the links to your social media for my listeners and followers at the end. I just wanted to end our conversation on why it's important that once we live up to our potential, okay, we have a ton of potential, we're living it, we're now we need to be focused, okay? We need to bring that amount of energy and drive like you have and give purpose for our potential so that we can align with our passions. So I want you to just give us a, a quick two minutes on that and we'll wrap up. Yes, living up, up to your passion is very important and change, change is scary and uncertain and we all, but what is life? Life is change and it's all about how you view that change. Are you seeing it as an opportunity or are you seeing it as some block and some, something that will be a burden? I see it as an opportunity. Without that, I wouldn't be here talking to uh, Captain Rex. And I want to leave you actually with the greatest question Carl Jung said. The most important question anyone can ask is what myth am I leaving? So what myth are you leaving about your life and what you are not doing that you could be doing and to live your potential, to live your life and to be happy and serve others through your gift? That's amazing. Um, I, I can't imagine. I, I watched a lot of cartoons when I was little and one of my favorite cartoons was Snoopy, right? Charlie Brown. Remember? Yeah. How, how unfulfilled would we all be if we never imagined a, a, a cartoon without seeing Charlie Brown or even knowing the character Snoopy. So Charles Schultz is the creator of, of Peanuts, right, of, of uh, Snoopy. And he said that there's no heavier burden in life than an unfulfilled potential. And that is so true. When you find that you have a goal, when you find that you have a dream, when you find that you want to take action on your dream, I must warn you, and I warn everybody on that listens to my podcast, that when you go to pursue your dream, be careful because all dreams will be tested for authenticity. Okay? <laughs> be ready for that and be excited because that's part of the process of life, challenging your will, challenging your resolve to accomplish your goal. 
because if you don't meet that challenge and overcome the the limits of what are created from society in terms of reaching your goals you will never reach them and so it's it's best to pursue your potential fulfill your passions and live your purpose so i'm captain rex Whitcamp biata thank you so much for being on our podcast today thank you so much captain rex i want to remind everybody that life is not found between the isms and the schisms of life and it's time to quit the absolute paralysis of analysis and jump in with both feet as far and as wide and as hard as you can. Because when you couple your potential with your purpose and it aligns with your passion, the universe will unfold for you and you will accomplish what it is that you set out to do, what you want it is, what you were designed to do. So thank you for rising above mediocrity, elevating your standards. Thanks for visualizing the best, best versions of yourselves and then taking action, living up to your highest potential, and then finding a purpose for your potential. Thanks uh, everyone again. Thanks, Beata, for the channels. And I will call into you, I'll contact you about the book uh, deal for that I'm excited to show. I haven't even talked to you about that <laughs> and about our show coming up. So thanks again to my listeners and thank you. So thanks again, Beata. Thank you so very much, Rex. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Take care. We'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.